We are hosting this event today because uh, we are a revolutionary socialist organization. And this moment isn't only ripe for discussing capitalism and how it's really the root of all of our social ills, but it's actually vital that we discuss it. We need to expose the system for what it really is. Um, as many people know, George Floyd was brutally murdered by police. Many of us have seen the gruesome video that shows his life being taken from him as multiple police ignore his pleas. And while when we saw it, we knew that none of us were alone in feeling disgust and outrage, not just for Floyd, but for all of the uncounted times that people have died, been harassed, brutalized, and made to feel that their lives don't matter because they're Black. Those of us that were outraged knew we weren't alone and we acted on it. And all over the country, people rose up, many of us putting ourselves at risk of, contra of contracting the deadly coronavirus to demonstrate in the streets together. Minneapolis exploded with massive nonstop protests, as did hundreds of other cities around the country and really around the world. On Monday, here in the Bay Area, me and others in Speak Out attended and helped organize a demonstration led by Oakland Tech students. Police reported that 15,000 people were in attendance, which means it was most likely larger than that. And Beyond the big demonstrations, there are countless small towns and cities that also came out. What's going on right now is, I think, a particular moment where the horrific conditions that many of us are used to accepting as normal become intolerable. We're witnessing what has the potential to become the most important movement of our lifetimes. If you look back at movements like the 1930s during the Great Depression, or the civil rights movement, these were life-changing time periods. People's lives were defined by what they did and did not do during these periods. And it's rapidly becoming a situation where we all could be faced with making similar choices. It isn't hard to see where the root of these problems lie, especially now after months of shelter in place amid a global pandemic, widespread unemployment and an economic crash along with the latest murders of Black people by racist police like Breonna Taylor, as well as other cases like Ahmaud Arbery and the countless others like them. It's really all exposed the real foundations and priorities of capitalism. Racism has been part of this system since its foundation. It's been used to justify brutality and genocide, to rationalize the enslavement of Africans for the enrichment of plantation owners, it's been used to oppress, exploit, and brutalize the Black population for centuries. And it's been used to create a wedge between Black and white workers. It's similar to how Trump has tried to drive a wedge between immigrant workers and those born in the US. Using the state as a force to defend the racist divide is also nothing new. In fact, one of the earliest policing institutions in the United States was formed to defend slave owners' private property by capturing escaped slaves. And because police, and that's because police are the face of the capitalist state, a state that exists to defend private property and protect the status quo. The police are simply the violent front line of defense for this system. Whenever there are social movements of any form, whether it's workers on strike or young people in the streets, we see cops come in as the main line of defense for the ruling class to try to brutalize people into submission. In normal times, this violence is hidden from those who don't live in the poorest neighborhoods or in majority black and brown communities. But in times like these, the role of the police is clear for everyone to see. We see it when healthcare workers struggle to find uh, protective equipment during a deadly pandemic, while riot cops are suited head to toe in military gear. We see it when police protect Target as they murder Black people without provocation. We see that the protection of wealth, private property, and ultimately the capital of banks and corporations 
is the number one priority for this society. Capitalism is a system that was built on and thrives on exploitation, which is why it's so outrageous when they try to demonize protesters for looting. Capitalism was founded on looting, war, pillage, and the plunder of Africa, the Americas, the Philippines, and most countries around the world. And it's still part of maintaining this system. The 20th and 21st centuries are centuries of constant war around the world, wars of domination, occupation, and extraction. And all we have to do is look at the images of cities reduced to rubble and body counts from endless oil wars in the Middle East to see it now. And racism isn't the only tool used to divide us. Women are paid less to do the same jobs and live in constant fear of violence. The leading cause of death for pregnant women in the United States is being murdered by a partner. And more than 1,000 women are killed every year by male partners. Immigrant workers are demonized and used as scapegoats and then thrown into literal cages, all while fleeing devastation that are the result of US policies and intervention in the countries they're forced to flee. And there continues to be an unwillingness of this society to recognize LGBTQ people as fully human. Prejudice and racism are excellent tools for divide and conquer. And that's why these divisions persist, because the working class is the majority of society. If we united against our real enemy, we would be too powerful. We do all of the work to make society run, and yet we constantly live in fear of unemployment, living paycheck to paycheck, if that. It's gotten so bad that life expectancy has decreased in the United States, not because of diet and exercise, but because people are dying at earlier ages from what some are calling deaths of despair due to alcohol, drugs, and suicide. And all of this is true because capitalism prioritizes profits over everything. We don't have so much a healthcare system as a wealth care system. Medical expenses are so high that people are constantly going bankrupt after getting sick. And many people can't afford to see a doctor, so they don't. This has only gotten worse during the COVID crisis. The pandemic spread more easily in the United States because so few people could afford to see a doctor and we're, and we're used to going to work sick. Also, due to the focus on optimizing hospitals for productivity, capacity of hospitals has been severely reduced, making the possible influx of patients a potential disaster. Not to mention the lack of preparatory supplies for testing and protective equipment because stockpiling for emergencies isn't profitable. If people remember, Trump accidentally made a statement in March that the insurance industry would be treating COVID patients for free, but there was no way that insurance companies weren't going to profit off of this crisis. So they immediately came out saying that they would be providing free tests, but not treatments, knowing they would make their money once people were admitted. COVID has truly exposed the priorities of capitalism. 83% of COVID deaths in the United States could have been avoided if social distancing had happened just two weeks earlier. That's 54,000 deaths. Why? Business interests and the White House were obsessed with the impact it could have on the economy. Politicians came out in defense of the economy, agreeing to sacrifice lives for profit. And while the pandemic has really laid bare the horrors of capitalism, they were here all along. Education, seen as a pathway by many to improve our futures, is really just a way to train the next workforce. It's not a priority. Schools are underfunded, many of them understaffed. And in Oakland, and community, uh, in Oakland teachers and community members are faced with school closures amidst an already underfunded system. Low-income schools are often run like prisons, and for those who are able to attend college, they face a lifetime of debt and few opportunities when they graduate. And now, with most states facing budget deficits, we see education is the first thing on the list to be cut. And the pandemic has just brought all of this into focus 
that protecting the profits of corporations has always been the main concern. And we see the kind of economic crisis the pandemic has unleashed. It's estimated that 46 million people filed for unemployment since March 21st, the highest number ever recorded in history in this country, worse than the Great Depression. Millions of perfectly edible fruits, vegetables, gallons of milk, and other foods have been destroyed rather than redistributed to the hungry during this crisis because it's been more profitable to waste them than give them to people who need it. It's expected that more than 7 million animals raised for food production are going to be put to death and thrown away by June. And housing and homelessness <clears throat> have been in crisis for years, but with this crisis, it's really been highlighted. The homeless population has been left to die and continue to spread COVID while more than enough hotels and luxury apartments are empty. In one instance, homeless people were set up in a parking lot in Vegas with six foot apart chalk lines, rather than given any of the thousands of hotel rooms in the empty hotels that litter the city. And rent moratoriums have done little or no good because they require people to pay back rent that most can't afford and because many landlords have simply ignored them. And many small businesses will be gone forever. Meanwhile, banks and corporations have gotten trillions of dollars in government support. There have been COVID breakouts in workplaces like meat packing plants, and the response has been too bad, send them back to work, we'll just see who dies. Because what are human lives when profit is on the line? In prisons, in detention centers, we've seen the same attitude, let people die because it doesn't impact profit margins. And overall, we see it again and again, profits are put first, even if it means the death of over 100,000 people in this country. There's been a complete disregard for what the science has shown and what is needed to combat the pandemic. What matters most is what corporations need. And this is exactly the same as what we see regarding climate change. Who cares what the scientists say? What matters most is profits, even if it means bringing about our own extinction. This system has really shown that it cannot protect us and it's exposed itself to be a threat to all of humanity. So how can we change it? We're told over and over again that elections are our only way to change things. It's just a matter of time before the Democrats try to channel all of this anger and outrage in the streets into elections in November offering another round of empty promises. But that's never been true. Elections have rarely brought about any significant change. There may be new faces, new parties, but the main priorities stay exactly the same. Real change comes when people are able to mobilize mass movements. But we've seen movements come and go in the past, and here we are today, facing the same problems, many that are even more severe. And that's because movements that stop at reforms like important legislative changes are useful, but they aren't enough. They don't go far enough because they can't, because they keep capitalism intact. So the system keeps going with its same priorities, profit at all costs, and all the problems and worse come back every time. If we want to see any real lasting change, we have to get rid of this system of exploitation and violence for good. I've been at some of the protests and seen many of the videos and thousands of people are correctly calling for justice for George Floyd. But what is justice in this case? Who really killed George Floyd? Was it just the four officers with knees pinning him down and choking him to death? What about the police chief that has accepted regular acts of brutality as the norm? Or the mayors or the governors of any city and state where police brutality is accepted as the status quo. Why stop there? We all know that Floyd was not the first black man to be murdered by the police, nor is he the last. So what is justice when the entire capitalist system has had its knee on George Floyd's neck his whole life? The only justice is to get rid of this system. With the misery that our situation has imposed on many people, and the explosion of protests 
Capitalism's Achilles heel has been exposed. It's pushed people to the edge. Their system cannot function. Nothing can move. Nothing can be produced without the labor of working people. Even though we're used to being beaten down, we have more power than we know. We clearly see what their future means for us. More misery, more crises, more brutality, more wars, and the threat of extinction. This isn't a future anyone can accept, but we see the possibility of another future that's slowly coming together in the streets. People are being pushed into activity, and it's going to be up to each one of us where it leads.